Hello everyone! Recent archaeological discoveries in Tafugalt, Morocco have unveiled fascinating insights into human history in North Africa. Researchers analyzed the DNA of 15,000-year-old skeletons found in the Cave of the Pigeons, revealing genetic links to West Africa and the Near East. This study highlights the significance of this region in understanding human migrations and cultural practices of the time. Today we are honored to welcome a very special guest from Tafugalt to 15,000 years ago. Hello sir! and welcome to the Morocco Nation community. To start, can you tell us your name? Hello, sir. You can call me Dada, and I come from Tafakhalt 15,000 years ago. It's a pleasure to be here with you in this incredible era. We've chosen to call you Dada for the purpose of this show, but what name do the members of your tribe use for you? In our time, names are not like they are today. We often recognize each other by distinctive traits, significant events, or skills. But if you need to call me something, Dada works just fine. In my tribe, I might have been called the one who hunts well, or the one who knows plants. Names are closely tied to what we do and our roles in the community. Okay, Dada, thank you for agreeing to speak to us in English so our viewers can understand. But what language do you normally speak? In Tafogalt, we speak an ancient language that you might call Proto-Berber, or an early form of Tamazid. It's a rich and melodious language suited to our daily life, rituals, and environment. We use a lot of gestures and facial expressions to convey our emotions and needs, which makes our language very lively and expressive. Fascinating. So you are Amazigh? Exactly. We are the ancestors of the Amazigs. In our time, we lived in harmony with nature, hunting, gathering, and respecting the spirits of our ancestors. We already had a strong connection with our land, the mountains, and the stars. The Amazigh culture you know today has its roots in our way of life and ancient traditions. It's a great pride to see our heritage endure through the centuries. Nice to meet you, Dada. Speaking of your identity, could you introduce yourself and tell us who you are? Nice to meet you. I am a member of the Tafakalt tribe from 15,000 years ago. I am a hunter and gatherer like most of my people. We live in harmony with nature, deriving our sustenance from the animals we hunt and the plants we gather. Our community is close-knit. We share everything and take care of each other. We have rituals to honor our ancestors and the spirits of nature. Life is simple, but full of meaning and respect for our environment. Very interesting. Where exactly is your tribe located on the land we know today? Our tribe is located in the Tafakalt region of present-day Morocco. We live in the Oriental Mountains near what you now call the city of Berkhan. Our dwellings are caves and rock shelters that protect us from the elements and provide a safe refuge. We are surrounded by forests and water sources allowing us to hunt, gather, and live in harmony with nature. I've heard of something like, hmm, the Grotte des Pigeons. Does that mean anything to you? Ah, of course. The Grotte des Pigeons is our main refuge. We call it Ifri Namar. It's a sacred place for us, located in the Oriental Mountains. This cave offers us protection and shelter, especially during bad weather. We store our provisions there, and it is also a gathering place for rituals and ceremonies. Modern archaeologists have found many of our stone tools, ornaments, and even remains of our ancestors providing evidence of our daily life and cultural practices. Oh, great. You're Moroccan, just like me. How long has your people lived in Morocco? Can you tell us about your ancestors and their history in this region? Yes, we are Moroccans, 
even though in my time we did not know this term. We have lived in this region for thousands of years. My ancestors have always inhabited the Oriental Mountains, where they developed a rich culture in harmony with nature. They were mainly hunter-gatherers, using stone tools to hunt and prepare their food. We also have rituals to honor our ancestors and the spirits of nature, which shows our deep respect for our environment and history. Our traditions are passed down from generation to generation, creating a continuity that makes us proud. All right, Dada, welcome to our set. Why did you arrive in such light clothing? Aren't you cold? Can you describe your style of dress? <laughs> yes, it's true that my outfit might seem light to you. In our time, we wear simple clothes made from the skins of animals we hunt. They are flexible and well suited to our environment. We also use plant fibers to make ropes and sometimes loincloths. In winter, we add layers of thicker skins to protect ourselves from the cold. It's rudimentary compared to your modern clothes, but it keeps us warm and allows us to move easily while hunting. Next time, maybe I'll invite your wife. The view might be even more interesting. Just kidding. Don't take it seriously. Ha ha ha. Ha ha ha. Ah, I see what you mean. But you know, modesty is very important to us. Women also wear animal skins, often adorned with small shells or beads they find. They are strong and skilled, often responsible for gathering and taking care of the children. Their clothing is practical and suited to our way of life. And yes, I might be a little jealous, but I am mostly proud of my family and our culture. Hmm, great. Speaking of your wife, what is the role of women in your society in general? Ah, the women in our tribe play a central and vital role. They are the keepers of the home and community. Their day often begins before sunrise. They gather fruits, nuts, and medicinal plants. They also prepare meals using simple but effective cooking techniques like hot stone cooking. Women are also responsible for the children, their education, and their well-being. They teach them the skills needed to survive and thrive in our environment. Women also make clothes from animal skins and plant fibers and create handcrafted items like baskets and ornaments. They play a key role in rituals and ceremonies, often as keepers of our people's traditions and stories. Their wisdom and knowledge of medicinal plants are crucial for the tribe's health and survival. In short, the women in our tribe are pillars of our society, strong, resilient, and respected. Now, let's talk about your daily life. Can you describe a typical day in your life at the Grotte des Pigeons? A typical day at the Grotte des Pigeons starts early in the morning. The men prepare for the hunt, sharpening their stone weapons and ensuring their traps are in good condition. They often go out in groups, following the tracks of animals in the surrounding forest. Meanwhile, the women and children go out to gather. They collect fruits, nuts, and edible or medicinal plants. The women also handle domestic tasks like preparing meals and making clothes from animal skins. At midday, everyone gathers to share a meal. It is an important time of the day when we discuss our findings and plans. Children learn by observing and participating in the adults' activities. The afternoon is often dedicated to specific tasks, repairing tools, tanning hides, or working on community projects like reinforcing shelters. The elders of the tribe tell stories and pass on their knowledge to the younger ones. In the evening, we gather around the fire. It is a time of rest and communion where we sing, dance, and pay tribute to our ancestors and the spirits of nature. The day ends with gratitude for the resources the earth has provided and a promise to continue living 
in harmony with it. Wonderful! You mentioned hunting. What animals do you hunt and what techniques do you use to catch them? We mainly hunt gazelles, deer, and sometimes aurochs, these large wild cattle. Hunting is a communal and strategic activity. We use spears and stone-tipped weapons that we have carefully crafted. We also set traps and nets in areas where animals come to drink or feed. To catch the animals, we form hunting groups and coordinate our movements to encircle and drive the prey into areas where it is easier to trap them. We closely observe their behavior and habits, which helps us succeed in our hunts. A successful hunt is always a moment of celebration for the tribe, as it ensures our sustenance for several days. You talked about several tools. Were you technologically advanced 15,000 years ago to make effective hunting tools? Yes, we were quite technologically advanced for our time. We knew how to make very effective stone tools. We primarily used flint, which we precisely shaped to create spear points, knives, and scrapers. These tools allowed us to hunt efficiently, prepare animal skins, and work wood. We also used percussion techniques to shape the stone, striking pebbles to detach sharp flakes. These flakes were then refined to obtain sharp edges. Our tools were robust and well suited to our daily needs. Making these tools required a lot of skill and experience passed down from generation to generation. After catching these animals, how do you prepare your meals? What are your favorite ingredients and dishes? We prepare our meals using simple but effective methods. The meat of the animals we hunt is often grilled over open fires. We use heated stones to cook the meat slowly, making it tender and flavorful. The fruits, nuts, and roots we gather are eaten raw or lightly cooked. We particularly enjoy dishes where we mix meat with herbs and berries to add flavor. For example, a stew of meat with wild berries and aromatic herbs is one of our favorite dishes. We also use flat stones to crush nuts and seeds, creating nutritious paste that we eat as a side dish. Water is collected from natural springs and sometimes we boil plant infusions for their medicinal benefits. Every meal is a moment of sharing and communion where we celebrate the gifts of nature and the solidarity of our community. From our conversation, I understand that spirituality plays a very important role in your life. Can you tell us about your beliefs? Yes, spirituality plays a central role in our lives. We believe that everything in nature is inhabited by spirits, from the trees to the animals, rivers, and mountains. We deeply respect these spirits and make offerings to ensure their benevolence. We have rituals to honor our ancestors as we believe they watch over us and guide us. During ceremonies, we sing, dance, and make symbolic sacrifices to thank the spirits and ask for their protection. These practices strengthen our bond with nature and our community, reminding us of the importance of living in harmony with our environment. Can you explain your funeral practices and what they mean to you? Our funeral practices are deeply rooted in our spirituality and respect for the ancestors. When someone in our tribe dies, we bury them in the Grotte des Pigeons, which is a sacred place for us. The body is often accompanied by personal objects, tools, and ornaments symbolizing the person's life and contributions to the community. We believe these offerings help the deceased in the afterlife. We also perform rituals to honor the spirits of the dead and ensure their peaceful passage to the other world. These rites include songs, dances, and food offerings. It is a way for us to maintain a strong connection with our ancestors and show our respect and gratitude for their blessings and protection. 
You seem to go into great detail about your beliefs. What are the important rituals or ceremonies in your culture? On our culture, several rituals and ceremonies are essential. One of the most important is the hunting ritual, where we thank the spirits of the animals for their sacrifice. Before going out to hunt, we sing and dance to ask for protection and success. Another significant ritual is the initiation ceremony for young people, where adolescents undergo trials to become full members of the tribe. This includes tests of courage, skill, and knowledge of traditions. We also have seasonal celebrations, such as the Harvest Festival, where we offer the first fruits and thank the spirits of nature for their generosity. These rituals strengthen our bond with the earth and our community, ensuring the continuity of our traditions and our harmony with our environment. You mentioned hunting and dangers. Surely there are daily accidents. How do you manage illnesses and injuries in your tribe? Indeed, illnesses and injuries are part of our daily life, and we have developed several methods to manage them. For injuries, we use medicinal herbs that we apply as poultices to aid healing and prevent infections. Leaves of certain plants, like aloe, are applied directly to cuts for their healing properties. For illnesses, we have plant-based remedies that our healers know well. They prepare infusions and decoctions from roots and leaves to treat common ailments like fevers and pains. We also believe in the power of spirits and healing rituals, where we sing and dance to drive away the evil spirits responsible for the illness. Hygiene is also important to us. We regularly wash in pure water sources and ensure our habitats are clean to prevent the spread of diseases. Our ancestors passed down this knowledge to us and we deeply respect it as it allows us to survive and thrive in our environment. I've heard that you could perform complex surgeries at the time, is that true? In reality, we did not practice complex surgeries like those of today. However, we had advanced knowledge for our time. We knew how to treat injuries and certain illnesses with medicinal plants. For example, we used herbal poultices to heal cuts and infections. Our healers were experts in using plants and natural remedies. It is fascinating to see how much of this knowledge has been passed down through the ages and is still used today. Today we have found jewelry and art objects in the cave. Can you tell us about their creation and significance? Ah, the jewelry and art objects from our time are truly fascinating. In Tafahalt, we made jewelry primarily from shells, animal teeth, and semi-precious stones we found in our environment. These materials were carefully drilled and strung together to create necklaces, bracelets, and other ornaments. Shells, in particular, were highly prized and often traded with other groups for goods and services. Art objects often had spiritual and symbolic significance. For example, mammoth ivory pendants, although rarer, were beautifully carved and often bore marks or motifs that might have had utilitarian or ritual significance. Some of these pendants were possibly used to record important events or natural cycles like the phases of the moon. These creations were not only decorative, but were an integral part of our culture and identity. They testified to our craftsmanship, beliefs, and connection with nature and the spirits around us. What motifs or symbols do you use in your art and what do they mean? Ah, the motifs and symbols we used in our art had many important meanings for us. In our culture, in Tafogalt, we created geometric and abstract drawings on objects and cave walls. For example, motifs like spirals, dots, and negative hands, where the hand is painted in outline, leaving the imprint empty, were common. 
Spirals could represent life cycles or the movements of celestial bodies, while dots were often used to count or mark significant events. Negative hands might have been a way of saying, I was here, or marking belonging to a specific group. We also used shapes like tectiform signs, roof shaped, that were probably clan identity markers or symbols of protection. Colors, especially red, were also very important. We prepared red ochre by heating certain iron-rich soils, which intensified the color and gave it spiritual and protective significance. These symbols and colors were part of our way of communicating, identifying ourselves, and connecting with the spiritual and natural world around us. What are your relationships with neighboring tribes like? Are there exchanges or conflicts? Relationships with neighboring tribes varied depending on the circumstances. We had regular exchanges with some tribes for valuable objects like shells, semi-precious stones, and flint tools. These exchanges were essential for obtaining resources we didn't always find in our own environment. However, there were also moments of tension and conflict. Competition for resources, especially during times of scarcity, could lead to confrontations. We had protocols and rituals to resolve conflicts and avoid wars. But when negotiations failed, fights could break out. These conflicts were often resolved through duels or mediations led by the elders of the tribes. In general, we tried to maintain peaceful relations and foster alliances because they were beneficial for the survival and well-being of our community. Solidarity and cooperation were valued, and we taught our children the importance of mutual respect and communication to resolve disputes. Hmm, even back then, did Algerians try to take part of your land? <laughs> ah, I see. You know, even in our time, we would probably have had some friendly little quarrels with our neighbors, but nothing serious. The Algerians of the time, or rather the tribes living in what is now Algeria, were like us. They were looking for resources, water, and fertile lands. But I can tell you one thing. We had good relations and many exchanges. And if they ever tried to steal a part of our land, we would simply have shared a good meal and resolved it around the fire with a few stories and lots of laughter. After all, we know that nature offers enough for all of us to live in peace and harmony, and who wouldn't want to be neighbors with the beautiful Grotte des Pigeons? Hmm, ooh, okay, Dada. Let's go back to knowledge and exchange. How do you pass on knowledge and skills to younger generations? Hmm, in our tribe in Tafakalt, we pass on knowledge and skill to the younger generations, mainly through oral tradition and observation. The elders play a crucial role in this process. They tell stories, legends, and myths that contain life lessons and practical skills. Children learn by actively participating in daily activities like hunting, gathering, and making tools. We also use songs, dances, and rituals to teach the traditions and values of our community. The young ones observe and imitate the adults' gestures, allowing them to acquire the necessary skills to survive and thrive in our environment. This method of learning is very effective as it is rooted in practice and direct experience, thus strengthening cohesion and cultural continuity. Earlier, we talked about the role of women in your society. Could you give us more details about the roles of men and women in your society? How are tasks divided? In our society in Tafakalt, the roles of men and women are well-defined and complementary. Men are mainly responsible for hunting and protecting the tribe. They make tools, set traps, and engage in warfare activities if necessary. The skills needed for these tasks are passed from father to son 
through rituals and practical training. Women, on the other hand, handle gathering, preparing meals, making clothes, and caring for the children. They also play a key role in passing on cultural and medicinal knowledge using plants to heal and maintain the tribe's health. Women are also responsible for certain rituals and ceremonies that honor the ancestors and the spirits of nature. Tasks are divided to best utilize each person's skills and strengths, ensuring the tribe's survival and prosperity. Collaboration between men and women is essential, with each member of the community contributing uniquely to collective life. Can you describe your habitat and how it is organized? Our habitat in Tafakalt, particularly in the Grotte de Pigeon, is organized to maximize our safety and efficiency in our environment. The cave itself is vast and offers natural protection against the elements and predators. Inside the cave, we have distinct areas for different activities. For example, the front parts of the cave near the entrance are often used for daily activities such as preparing meals and making tools. This is where we find many hearths and charcoal deposits, indicating cooking and family gathering areas. The deeper parts of the cave are reserved for burials and sacred rituals. We bury our dead with care, often accompanied by their personal belongings and symbols of their status and role in the tribe. These burials show great respect for our ancestors and a belief in a spiritual afterlife. We also use specific spaces for food storage, especially dried fruits, nuts, and meats, which are kept for periods when hunting is less successful. The walls of the cave are decorated with paintings and engravings depicting animals and hunting scenes, which may also have ritual or educational meanings to pass on knowledge about hunting techniques and animal behavior. In summary, our organization of space in the cave reflects our hunter-gatherer lifestyle, respect for rituals and ancestors, and our need to live in harmony with our environment. Okay, Dada, tell us now, how do you manage natural resources to avoid depleting them? Ah, you touch on a sensitive point. In Tafogalt, we are very aware of the importance of preserving our natural resources. We live in harmony with our environment and have developed methods to avoid depleting what nature offers us. For example, when we hunt, we take care not to hunt more than we need. We respect the reproductive cycles of animals to ensure they continue to thrive. We use hunting techniques that target older individuals, allowing the young to grow and reproduce. For gathering, it's the same. We never take all the plants from the same area. We always leave enough fruits, nuts, and roots so the plants can continue to grow and multiply. We know our environment well and know which plants are in season and when to harvest them to avoid depletion. Water is sacred to us. We make sure never to pollute our water sources and take only what we need for drinking and cooking. We know that without water, we couldn't survive. So we treat it with great respect. And then we have our rituals and beliefs that reinforce this respect for nature. We always thank the spirits of nature for the gifts they give us and make offerings to show our gratitude. In short, our way of life is based on a delicate balance with our environment. We know that if we disrupt this balance, our survival is at stake, so we do everything to live in symbiosis with nature, taking care never to overexploit it. It's a matter of respect and wisdom passed down from our ancestors. Interesting. Let's skip to another subject. Do you have any tales or stories that you pass down from generation to generation? Could you tell us one? Ah, tales and stories are at the heart of our culture in Tafakalt. We have many stories that we pass down from generation to generation. 
These tales teach us important lessons about life, nature, and our ancestors. Let me tell you one of our favorite stories. It's about Anzar and the rain. Anzar is our god of rain. In our story, a village was suffering from a terrible drought. The crops were dying, the animals were weakening, and the people were losing hope. The village elders decided to organize a great ritual to invoke Anzar and ask for his help. They gathered around a big fire, singing and dancing, offering their last crops and precious shells. They implored Anzar to send them the rain needed to save the village. After hours of prayers and songs, the sky suddenly darkened and a blessed rain began to fall, bringing life and hope to everyone. This story reminds us of the importance of faith, community, and respect for the forces of nature. It also teaches us that even in the darkest moments, there is always a chance for renewal if we remain united and respectful of ancient rituals and beliefs. Tales like this are essential to us because they transmit not only life lessons, but also our cultural heritage, linking us to our ancestors and our land. Interesting. Now tell me, what techniques do you use to survive difficult climatic conditions? To survive in difficult climatic conditions, we have developed several techniques that allow us to adapt and thrive in our environment. Our knowledge is passed down from generation to generation, ensuring our resilience in the face of nature's challenges. When it's very cold, we shelter in caves like the Grotte des Pigeons, which offer natural protection against the weather. We light fires inside to warm ourselves and cook our meals. Managing fire is essential, and we use techniques to keep it burning even in wet or windy conditions. During droughts, we know how to find and conserve water. We collect rainwater and use natural springs. Knowledge of local plants also helps us because some roots and plants store water that we can extract if needed. For periods when food is scarce, we have developed preservation techniques. We dry meat and fruits to store them for long periods. This allows us to have food reserves when hunting or gathering is less fruitful. Knowledge of the seasons and life cycles of animals and plants is crucial for planning our hunting and gathering activities sustainably. As for shelters outside caves, we build huts with wooden structures and animal skins. These shelters are well insulated and protect us from wind and rain. When it's very hot, we stay in the shade and adjust our activities to the cooler hours of the day to avoid heat stroke. All this is possible thanks to our careful observation of nature and our ability to use resources respectfully and sustainably. Our survival techniques are the result of knowledge accumulated over generations, ensuring our continued adaptation to climatic challenges. Okay, okay, da da. Hmm. We have learned about you thanks to Moroccan and foreign researchers. What message would you like to convey to them through your appearance on this show? Hmm. Ah, what a pleasure to be able to express myself in this modern era thanks to you. I would like to send a big thank you to the researchers who made this possible. A special thank you to Dr. Louise Humphrey of the Natural History Museum, who has worked on the excavations of the Grotte des Pigeons since 2004, as well as Dr. Abdel Jalil Bouzougar of the National Institute of Archaeology and Heritage Sciences in Rabat, Morocco. Thanks to their efforts, they have not only discovered fascinating aspects of our way of life, but also created this bridge between our past and your present. Your hard work and discoveries have helped to shed light on our history and traditions. And for that, I am deeply grateful. 
Keep exploring and uncovering the mysteries of our past because each finding brings us closer together and helps us better understand where we come from. Thank you so much for preserving and sharing our heritage with the world. Dada, you have traveled to 2024 to talk to us. We are your descendants. What message do you want to pass on to us? And if you could give advice to people today in 2024, what would it be? Hmm, I am incredibly moved to see everything you have accomplished in 2024. You live in a world of technological wonders and knowledge, things we could never have imagined in our time. It is a great pride to see that you have inherited our spirit of resilience and deep respect for nature. My message to you is simple but full of meaning. Never forget where you come from. Your roots are deep and powerful, rooted in the land of Morocco, the land of the Amazes. This connection to your past is a source of strength and wisdom. Take care of this land, honor your ancestors, and respect the nature around you. Observing your world, I see so much potential, but also challenges. Technology offers you incredible tools to improve your lives, but it can also distance you from essential things, human connection, respect for nature, and the simplicity of life. My advice is to find a balance. Use your advancements to protect and preserve, to connect, and not to isolate. Life in our time was simple, but every moment was filled with meaning and connection. Learn to appreciate the little things, to slow down, and to truly live each moment. You have an incredible heritage. Use it to build a future where you can be proud of your roots and your accomplishments. Stay strong, stay united, and never forget that you are the guardians of this land and these traditions. I'm proud of you and what you have become. Woo, what a touching message, Dada. Earlier, you mentioned singing. Hum, well, we have a special surprise planned for you and our viewers with a very special guest. Can you tell us who Talitla is? Ah, Talila. Talila is my lovely daughter. She loves singing and has a very good voice. She came with me to your era and enjoyed your modern songs too. Mm. Dear viewers, this is a special treat for you. This song, written by Talila, carries a heartfelt message for all of us. For the first time ever, an inhabitant of Tafugelt from 15,000 years ago is here with us, brought to life through artificial intelligence. Presenting Heart of the Ancestors by Talila. Oh, fantastic. Let's listen to my daughter's song. Lands of Tafu Hot, where the spirits roam and the stories halt. We hunted, we gathered, we lived in peace in the heart of Morocco, our souls released. We are the echoes of the past. Our roots run deep, our heritage vast From the caves to the modern day We carry our spirit in every way With tools of stone and fires bright we face the challenges day and night Respect for nature, our guiding light In the simplicity we found our mind We are the echoes of the past Our roots run deep, our heritage vast From the caves to the mall Oh, 
children of the future, hear my plea. Remember your roots, stay wild and free. Balance the old with the new, you see. And honor the land from mountain to sea. Modern world so fast and grand Don't forget the touch of the ancient hand Technology is a gift, but so is the sand Where our ancestors walked, where we stand We are the echoes of the past Our roots run deep, our heritage vast from the caves to the modern day We carry our spirit in every way Stay strong, stay kind, stay true With the wisdom of old In everything you do We are Amazine The proud and the few from top of home to you Wasn't that an amazing performance by Talila? Ooh, yes. We're so lucky to have had her with us tonight, Dada. Big thanks to all our guests Dada and Talila for being here and sharing with us. If you enjoyed this and want to see more content about Morocco and its rich history, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching and see you next time.